Hi, welcome to the Stitch TV show. I'm Liz. <laughs> and I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. The Stitch is an online quilting talk show, the perfect soundtrack for your sewing room. Join us as we chat about current topics in the quilting world, techniques to improve your own projects, and fun stories about our own quilts. Our episodes come out twice a month, complemented by virtual sew-ins and weekly podcasts. You can learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Today we're accompanied by the Lucky Star Jelly Roll Quilt. We'll be talking about quilting ergonomics and what's on quilter's wrist lists. So, Lynn, what you been doing lately? Well, I, you know, we had a kind of fantastic, you know, celebrity... <sighs> Sewing celebrity. You were so lucky to meet us. I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> we were kidding. so lucky to meet them. JK, but, LOL. Uh, <laughs> Cotton and Steel came and presented at two of the designers of <laughs> Cotton and Steel came and presented at a guild that we both go mm -hmm. to. And we got to hang out with Sarah and uh, Melody. Mm -hmm. And their presentation was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Did you not love it? I did. I I liked, so what they did, they talked about the design process that they go through at Cotton and Steel. So they're two of the five designers, and they talked about how they collaborate together and with the others within Cotton and Steel, how they have their contract set up with RJR, what process they go to from kind of inception through choosing scale and color in the comparison of strike-offs to prints. I mean, it was just, it was very educational. And that was fantastic because they brought all of these strike-offs, which if you do not know, what a strike-off is, is when you're designing fabric, you send your design to the manufacturer and theirs is in Japan. Mm -hmm. And so, and they actually will link to a uh, video that they produced. Oh, yeah on how the manufacturing process works. So anyway, their manufacturing's in Japan. They send them a picture of what they, a printout of what the fabric design should be. Then Japan takes that, mixes the colors, and prints it on fabric and sends it back to them, and that's what's called the strike off. Mm -hmm. Sends it back to them for them to approve it of does this color match my picture, you know, the picture that we sent you does this you know line match this did the color get in the right place um you know you don't want to be who's got a black antenna and a green antenna oh yeah if they're supposed to both be black or whatever um so very interesting to see you know the things that they're looking at and the things that they're looking for and why designs are this big or you know, why design, you have to think about scale of designs because we cut them up in little pieces and if it's got this big flower out and you cut it up in a little piece, mm -hmm. you're not going to get the flower. You're going to get a big orange blob or a big pink blob or whatever. <laughs> a blob. <laughs> yeah. It's a scientific quilt. It term. is. They shouldn't let me do this stuff, really. <laughs> so, but it was fantastic meeting them and um, just really interesting process. I, I like the whole, of course, we've already talked about that last episode, but I like the process of things and how stuff mm -hmm. works. So it was great. And they were great to us, really nice. Oh yeah, and I won a door prize. Oh. Yes, yeah, she did. did. It's um, Sarah Watts had done a design and it says fabric quarter and it's got a pair of scissors and a spool of thread. I'll put a picture up in the show notes so you guys can oh, see Oh, and it. one of the other things they talked about that I thought was interesting is they've just done two designs for um, Bernina. Mm. So you know how Bernina comes out with the- The custom machines. The custom machines. So two cotton and seal custom machines will be out soon. Oh, I think they are out now. Oh, right. Or at least you can see pictures of them. I've yeah. seen them in magazines. Yeah. So, and they talked about how there were, one of them has birds on it and how they kept having to move the birds around according to where the buttons were on the machine yeah. to design. And I thought, well, yeah, you got to think about that. <laughs> you know, just design a machine, but you got to make sure your buttons don't mess up or your design. The screen and everything. Yeah, exactly. So it was very interesting. Enjoyed meeting him. Thought it was a great program. Um, fascinating process. I, I, you know, I think it'd be cool to design fabric. Hmm. 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 Pam's panicking. I think it'd be cool. All right. So what we're going to talk about today, the first topic we're going to talk about is ergonomics. Yes. This was another viewer request talk about quilting and sewing ergonomics. Right. I don't know. You know far more than I do about it. I have Here's many what notes. I know is you're not supposed to lean over 
like I do at the long arm. Like this. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that. I think that's bad. Yes. Sit up straight, mm -hmm. which I get accused of not doing on a regular basis from production staff over here. Um, and, oh, I do know this, and I do try to do this. I don't, um, I stand up when I cut. Yes. I don't sit down and cut. Unless it's like, <laughs> I'm breaking my own rule. Unless I'm tired. Unless, no, it has nothing to do with being tired, but if I'm doing like really intricate paper piecing, you know, I'm so in one. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I do. sit down for that too. But for But do you know why? Why do I sit down for no, that? No, why should you not sit down for cutting? I, I think it's because it gives you leverage with your arm better and your stance. And you're, I don't know. No, I do not know why up here. Thank you for that <laughs> seamless segue. <laughs> tell me what I, tell me what movie well, I want to you see. Asked. Tell <laughs> me what. <laughs> so ergonomics can be broken down into two areas. There's a safety area and a strain component to it. So not only do you want to not slice your finger off, Looking at production you staff. You thinking we need to be times. safe with rotary cutter you're blades? Wielding that at me. I'm not wielding. It's not open. Mm. I know. <laughs> it was not open, and I didn't open it. So, check the film. Check the film. Mm. <laughs> Are we putting in an instant replay now? Is this some new check sports ball rule? With, <laughs> it's a sports uh, ball rule. We can call for All one right. replay. Instant per replay. <laughs> Lynn did not open the blade. No <laughs> foul. <laughs> No foul. No foul. Flag Go on the back. play. No flag on the play. Go back. Sports so, ball. So there's safety. <laughs> and strain issues. Oh, yeah. And honestly, when it comes to cutting, there's accuracy as well. So, yeah. <laughs> an important third thing. <laughs> That's like more mm. important than the other two. So standing Seriously. up when you cut, there's a couple components that go into it. It's it's as much about visibility as anything. Oh, right. Because yeah. when you're from coming, looking at the ruler from a higher up position, you have broader visibility on the field. I'm going to roll with this sports thing. <laughs> and it's as much knowing that you can get the proper angle. I'm going to leave the blade closed. Because you want to cut with your blade slightly angled in towards the ruler, not away, because that's going to make your piece of fabric that you're cutting too big compared to what you need versus straight up. You need to cut slightly at an angle to the ruler. I don't do that. <gasps> I cut straight. Huh. Like I would cut, I cut straight to the real. I don't angle it in. I'm like hmm. straight. Hmm. Huh? No? Hmm. Just right. Okay. So you can't get that visibility. You would also get a wonky angle with your arm. I agree with that. What do you think is the ideal height for a cutting surface? Well, it's supposed to be at the, I would say, this is my guess, because I didn't do the study on this, but I think it's supposed to be at the, the right height is where your shoulders are relaxed and your elbows naturally bend and you can put your hands on the table. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the ideal counter height, mm. and it, so we're in the U.S., it's going to be in inches. I'm sorry, the rest of the world, that is civilized and uses a metric system. I'm not going to do the math on camera. Uh, maybe I'll convert it in the show notes. So... The ideal cutting table height is usually between 34 to 36 inches. And the specific measurement for you should be stand up with your hands down at your sides and measure from the floor to a point four inches below your elbow. Oh, and so that's it's how four inches, four inches below. below. I knew it had to do with my elbows. Oh, because it, like this is not, you know, obviously this is we're sitting down too. You need your arm because you don't cut with your arm at a 90 degree angle. It it's, be, it's down. This looks... So natural. Welcome to our robot episode. <laughs> so four inches so below be your elbow is how high inches. your cutting table should be. Okay. And and the point I of need that to be is a lot taller. That is a strain reduction. I'm gonna have strain from doing this. Well then stop doing it. You go to the doctor, doctor, it hurts when I do that. Stop doing that. <laughs> Don't poke okay. it. So four inches <laughs> below your elbow. Four inches below your elbow. Right, that makes sense. Okay. I, I know that, I mean, I, I'm short, as we all know. <laughs> Please see a picture of us with ladies from Cotton and Steel for reference. <laughs> Here's Lynn. We did. And then there's Shoddies in the middle else. and tall people on well, the end. 
Sarah was stood next to me. She's short too. She's not as tall, or we're both not tall. People. You are fun sized. We're fun sized. Fun sized. So, but I know that <laughs> the cutting table that I bought, you know, it's just whatever height yeah. it is, and I've adjusted to it. But it's probably too tall for me. Probably is. Hmm. Hmm. It's probably right for you. What's the average height of American women? Usually between five, uh, five three, and five six. I'm 5'3". Hmm. No, that's average. I'm average. Congratulations, you're average. I thought I was... <laughs> I am above average. I thought it was taller. I thought it was like 5'5 five, uh, five to 5'8". Five, uh, we'll have to do some Googling on that uh, in wow. track. But I know, right. I th you know, as nutrition has improved, the average height has increased over time. So like, if I ate better, you'd say I'd be taller? Yeah, you probably should have had more broccoli as a kid. I ate tons of broccoli as a kid. Maybe not spinach, but tons of broccoli. We were a broccoli family. All right. So, okay. So, so, what else? I'm not supposed to lean over. Yeah, don't hunch. I know. I do. I do quilt like this. Because I'm just. I think that's a natural inclination, though, because you're yeah, into what you're doing. I'm into what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so, compared to a cutting height, do you think your pressing height should be the same? I'm going to say yes, but I have a feeling <gasps> that she's going to say Gosh, no. It is no. I thought so. So compare the weight of a rotary cutter to the weight of an iron. Which one weighs more? This is an easy question. Well, <laughs> um, considering I don't lift my iron, I'm going to say it weighs more technically, but I don't lift it because I have the little... No, you're lifting it right now. No, 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 no. <laughs> the, the iron that I have has got the little feet on it that stand up, so I don't lift it. I just move it over. It sets down, da-da-da, lifts up. So you're ironing, you're not pressing. You're supposed to press when you quilt. You know the oh, difference? dear God. I'm in so much trouble on this episode. Look, we brought some science into this one. <laughs> she so did. I'm going to make it real. Okay. So in theory. In theory, I should lift it. No, iron. this is But mean. wouldn't you say that that's an ergonomic iron? The iron no. that's. Oh. No, because you still have to lift it up to put it on the fabric. You don't just run it up over there and hope it doesn't crumple up your edge. So you oh, are okay. lifting it. Granted, you're not going like, woo, and doing that, you know. Okay, so, you're right. I do lift it. Because irons weigh more. They do. Than a rotary cutter. Yes. To reduce strain, you would want your ironing surface to be three inches higher than your cutting surface. So that would be one inch below your elbow. That table height. I don't, I think it's the same as my table height. Oh, mine is mine. two. I think it's, it is the same. Yeah, mine is two same. because it's like one big old surface. And I oh, just yours it, is one table. I, right. I mean, I guess maybe it's uh, three quarters of an inch higher because I have a ironing surface right. on top of the table where my cutting mat is. Yeah, mine's the same. Yeah. So in theory, to reduce strain. To so reduce you're not strain. lifting as much. Yes. Okay. All right, I'll have to look at that. Because you can adjust the, I can't adjust my cutting For table, a regular ironing but board, I can, you can, yeah. I can adjust my ironing board. Yeah. I can make it higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll be better. No, I, feel like, I feel like I feel like I'm going to come in with a clipboard and I'm going to make things. notes. And like, mm, it's failed like an safety OSHA inspection. requirement. You know. yeah. You should get an A for your, you know, it's like the food safety. You can get an A at the restaurant or B. In Georgia, you can get an A or B. You can get an F. Yes, they you shut can. down some chicken what? and waffles <laughs> restaurants. For getting an F repeatedly. <laughs> they show up in the, the website. <laughs> oh yeah, that one made the news, like yeah. the TV news. Anyway, okay, so let's talk about your sewing setup at your actual machine. At my actual machine. Now, there's a lot of components in here. I think I'm probably pretty good on this one though. So you got your chair height. I got my chair. You got your height. You got the table height. You got whether your machine is sitting embedded in the table or up on top of the table. Mine's embedded. Okay. All my machines are embedded. So the way that you would check your setup is you want to, you need to align your chair height to your sewing table height. I align my chair height to my leg height. Well, yes. But. Because if my feet, because. If your feet dangle, that's not good. If my feet dangle, I'm not comfortable. So my, most of my chairs <laughs> Are kind of low because <laughs> I don't want my feet dangling. <laughs> I have a low rider chair. <laughs> dun, 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 but dun, I don't dun, have dun. the. Oh, it doesn't bounce. It doesn't bounce. Do you have the fringe hanging in the. No, I don't have the fringe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So what you want to do with your chair is yes. get your chair positioned so your knees are bent at a 90 degree angle and your feet are flat on the floor. Yes, I, do. I have that because that's what I don't like to be dangling feet. Okay, now now bend your elbows so they are at 90 degree. Okay. And that is the height for if you measure from the floor to the bottom of your elbow when they're bent at a 90 degree angle. That's the height your table should be. Or the height of the bed of your sewing machine. The bed of the sewing machine. Which is an important distinction because if you just have a table and your machine She's sits on, on top, top of that, it. that's a good, you know, three, yeah. four inches. Versus sitting down, you know, flat in a table. I, I sew at a lot of quilt stores, so, you know, we we definitely bring in the table and put it on, you know, your machine's on top of the table. And I will say that I don't enjoy that. Yeah. That sewing makes me more tired than when if I'm sewing at home because mine's embedded in the table and it's just, yeah, you know. But maybe it's because, you know, when you go sew someplace, you're like lugging luggage around the whole time. Yeah, that'll make you I tired. I do feel like I pack up and go, you know, with your sewing machine that's 40 pounds and you're, I don't know if it's 40 pounds. It's Mine's heavy. 40 pounds. Mine's heavy. My featherweight's 12 pounds, I think. Check the science. I don't know. I don't, I don't take my featherweight most of the time, so. So, All what right. are adjustments that you could make if you're, like, if you're traveling? What, I mean, oh. look at what you can, so what could you do to accommodate if you're, you're set up, if you're at a retreat or your home is not? I will tell you, and I have done this, like, um, if I go so in our classes that we have at one of our guilds, we have the class at a certain place every time. I will double stack the chairs and sit on two chairs because the chairs are stackable. So I'll put two chairs together and sit on both chairs because that puts me up higher. Now my feet dangle, but that puts me up higher and I feel better um, than sewing like this. Yeah. <laughs> it puts me at a better height. So, then so how, I do that. How do you I, compensate for your feet dangling though? Um, I don't know that I do very you well. You could, you could, you know, put a box underneath your foot pedal. You could wear platform shoes. I could wear platform. Me and platform shoes would. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then you have another issue of is Lynn gonna break her ankle? <laughs> platform shoes does not equate Lynn's safety walking <laughs> because I'm a little bit clumsy. So I'm laughing because early in my marriage, my husband and I were watching the news, and for whatever reason, I mean, this was early 2000s, and there was a news story about how the <laughs> the platform flip-flop trend in Japan <laughs> was causing a rapid spike in ankle injuries. And you there was think? all this footage of women walking on the beach, not even just on the street, but on the beach in like three-inch platform flip-flops. And just, I mean, ankles snapping left and right. It was like... What's happening? <laughs> like, I always wonder, like, if you go to Six Flags or Disney World or something, and you see these people walking around in, like, heels, I'm like, why are you doing that to yourself? Like, wear tennis shoes. Well, no, I mean, the natural... Why? So, I mean, there's... I am not a podiatrist. Sandals. I am not a chiropractor. I am not a medical oh. professional. I don't even play one on the internet. However, things <laughs> I have read indicate that an optimal heel height is around one inch. Oh, Just for the, the nature of your foot. Now, you can walk around barefoot, and that's fine, but I find that my feet feel weird and strange. So, Ooh, I'm barefoot a lot. I'm I'm the southern stereotype in that. You hang out on the porch and talk on the phone. No, I just go around barefoot. You'd be all like the time. my neighbors that used to put the baby pool out on, on their the porch, driveway and don't... fill it up, and they would talk on their cordless phone in the baby pool while smoking. <laughs> no, I've never done that. We I'm just classy. saying I'm barefoot a lot. It, it always makes me sad when winter comes around. So I have to actually put on shoes. Or you can just put on socks. I do put on socks in the house, but you can't just run outside, you know, with socks on. Because then you get leaves and stuff. But we digress. We so, digress. So, so when you're sitting at your machine, are you being, so you're upright. Right. You and I are both guilty of this. I've seen it. <laughs> When we go to a class, we get out like the transformer tables that like clamp on the side. And then that way we can just go immediately from, oh, I don't have to get up and wait in line at the cutting table. I could like sew my thing and I could turn and I could do this. Yes. You're not, you're not, don't do that. You're going to jack up your back. I've done that and jacked up my back. Oh yeah, me too. We were at a retreat and we both had that set up and I was doing some really intricate foundation piecing oh. with um, stupid like 
Eighth inch pieces. Eighth inch pieces. I was stupid. I mean, the thing had like 800 pieces or 900 pieces in it. And I would sew it, turn, cut, sew it, turn, cut. And I was doing several of them. So I had a kind of process going. By the end of that retreat, I was so sore because I'd done this motion mm -hmm. so many times. And I'd even brought my own chair to the retreat. Like I, I put, remember that. We carpooled, I and I was like, a what are you chair for? She's like, you're putting a chair in here? I brought a chair to the retreat knowing, because it had a swivel aspect and still kind of jacked up my so back. So did you that. leave your feet even though you were swiveling? Was that the problem? I, I don't, I think it was just, even though the chair swiveled, it was still that constant repetitive motion. So I think what you got to do in that case. That did it. What you got to do in that case, if you take your own swivel chair, is you do one complete rotation and you yell out, wee, wee, <laughs> and then it. you spin back the other way. And that way, you're well, at least balancing it. I, I know, <laughs> you know, I talk about how it takes me a long time to quilt quilts. Well, one of the things with the long arm that I'm very conscious of is I will quilt for so long and then I stop and walk away. Yeah. And whether it's I do it for an hour, I do it for 30 minutes. Or one Hamilton. Or one Hamilton. <laughs> it's usually not one Hamilton though, because one Hamilton's two and a half hours. And if I did two and a half hours solid, I would be really sore. So I will, you know, quilt for an hour. I think hour's kind of my tops. Yeah, and yeah. then I walk away, go read a book, go, you know, get lunch or whatever. And then I come back to it. And so I'm very much on the straining aspect. I'm conscious of that in that, you know, I'm trying not to, to, to get myself in that situation. So I put time limits on myself. Yeah. And, and how you time yourself, I think, could be different ways. Yeah. So another part of ergonomics is lighting, which I know is a huge issue when yeah. you've gone to retreats where you just, you're maybe in a conference room and there's just very high up can lights. So how do you, what kind of lights do you take with you if you're doing a retreat? I'm not good at that. In fact, that's on my next segment list, <laughs> which, you know. Wish list. Wish list. Um, I don't, and I'm thinking I'd like to have one okay. to take with me. Uh, so I don't do that. I have one um, that I got last year and it plugs in, it's powered through like a USB. So I guess if I took my whole computer, I could do that. Or I could just get like a phone charger plug in adapter. And it's got three different brightness settings and it is super bright because it's an LED. And I was playing with it on the stitch it last night. If anyone saw, there was suddenly like a supernova on my, <laughs> my screen. <laughs> That's what I was playing with the light. Sorry about that. <laughs> it was very I bright. Saw, um, I saw this new power strip that has USB plugs in it as mm -hmm. well as power. I thought that would be good to have for a sew-in. Yeah. Because, you know, you're plugging up your iPad. A lot of times my iPads have directions on it oh, that yeah. I need to, instead of printing out paper directions or whatever, I'm getting stuff offline. So, mm -hmm. you know, I have PDFs on it. All right. Okay. Anything else? So strain <gasps> covered is that time. Thing. That would be my time. So just one more point um, regarding, I just threw all my caution to the wind. Uh, <laughs> You're like Eleanor Burns. So on the not swiveling thing, um, there's the concept in architecture called the golden triangle, which is primarily used to describe bathrooms and kitchens where there's three major, right. three I've major work areas. When they were designing our kitchen. Yeah. So for kitchens, it's stove, sink, fridge. And the, the point is as much about workflow and not jamming every all the all the stuff people need to get to to prep a meal in one spot and spreading it out so it's easier to work in there if there's multiple people so the idea is you're making you know an equilateral triangle with this layout now it's not feasible in every house by any means or no, in any right. sewing room by every means oh, but okay. putting some some distance between sewing machine ironing board and cutting mat which are your three key areas um, can really make the difference and get you in the habit of like do some sewing stand up walk over and do some pressing. So you're kind of breaking up that, that strain that you put. I think that's that good. I, I mean, I know we all set up the ironing thing as well as the little cutting yeah. thing. Um, but I like in my sewing room downstairs, I do stand up to go iron. Now mm -hmm. it's not three steps, but oh, yeah. it's... The Fitbit doesn't even register when yeah, I'm sewing. I'm like, I've done like a million steps sewing this. And it's like, no, two. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Fitbit. <laughs> two steps, one step, yeah. <laughs> So, but the fact that you're standing up to go do that, I think is, you know, it gets you in a different position, keeps you moving. Now, I also find if I put on my jams. <laughs> Hamilton? No. Yeah. No, sadly. I go to like Amazon yeah. Prime and pick a happy nut beat list. Then I will like 
I will be busted a move while I'm oh, ironing. I, yeah, I do that <laughs> while I'm on the long that arm. too. My, a little chair dancing. What? Yeah, a little chair dancing. <laughs> I do that. All righty. To Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> no others as well. <laughs> so uh, all to right. Chicago. Well, we're, we're going to take a quick break and look at the Lucky Star quilt behind us. This jelly roll friendly quilt pattern is available in our quilt shop at shop.thestitchtvshow.com. So. At, what's up with this? <laughs> he was thirsty. <laughs> Stitch was thirsty. He's not going to set that on fire. No, it's cooling him off. Sorry. <laughs> We're just going to leave that in. <laughs> yeah, we are, because I did that on purpose. <laughs> I didn't know if you'd notice or not. But you are observant. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Yay. Yay. Me. All right. So, so, speaking of being observant. Yes. Do you suspect that your spouse has been observant about your wish list for the season. <laughs> this this is... episode's in the mi dropping in the middle of December. We celebrate Christmas. We do. Christmas um, wish list. What's on there? This is, okay, this is, this is how the wish list works in our household. I put it together on Amazon Prime, <laughs> Amazon, and I send it to him and say, these are what I want. And he either chooses to go off the wish list or he goes rogue. <laughs> Yes, and and Rogue works out really well for me most times. Just saying, but I do put things on there that you know are a lot of times sewing related. Not everything on my wish list. I know is I found related. it. I looked at it. I was like, I'm going to put it on the wish list. A lot of it's cookbooks. I found it. I know. Yeah, but my sister shops off there too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, my uh, my side of the family does. So my mom and my sister. Yeah. Her wish list oriented from Amazon. Uh, my husband is frequently, every year, he's surprised to learn that he has an Amazon wish list. <laughs> oh, I have one? Yeah, I put it together for you. Oh, what's on there? You don't need to know. You'll be surprised. <laughs> Just making sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I put, like, books that I'm interested in. I love cookbooks for Christmas, so I put, usually I try to pick out a few cookbooks on there that I like or that I'd like to have. Um, that... Last year was um, the Pioneer Woman. Pioneer Woman, yeah. Yeah, I got several of her cookbooks, which I was really enjoyed. So I read cookbooks. Are Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg putting out a? I don't know, cookbook? but I'm telling you, <laughs> this is now one of my favorite shows on TV. It is hilarious. I know you haven't watched it yet, yet. but I'm it's funny. It was very just the class of crash clash clash clash. The clash of culture was just fantastic. And to see Snoop Dogg making fried chicken and Martha Stewart's fried chicken is just hilarious. So um, it's one of my favorite shows on TV right, right now. I thought it was great. Anyway, so I enjoy cookbooks. So those are always on my wish list. But for sewing-related stuff, I wanted the, um, I haven't gotten a new Angela Waters Tula Pink. Walters. Walt Walters. Um, Angela Walters. One could say that this is the Christmas episode because there is no L. <laughs> Walters. Uh, I'm saying cookbook, but it's a quilt book. Quilt book. And yes. I saw shots of their quilts from Market. Yes. And they are beautiful. So I'd like to get that for Christmas. Um, <laughs> the other thing, and I've already sent this to, to my husband, is... I have enjoyed doing, I took a class from Mickey Dupree a um, year and a half ago, and I do hand piecing. If you follow us, you see me post these castle wall blocks. On Instagram. On Instagram. And there are certain templates that I bought that allow you to mark hand piecing okay. um, for the castle wall. Well, she's come out with a set of hand piecing templates for her technique of hand piecing, which I really love. I think it's a great technique. And um, so I wanted that template set, which will allow you to do, um, I think she said 70 different blocks and okay. six, nine, 12 inch sizes. And you can combine them differently, the templates differently, gives you a whole variety. And as soon as I'm, I'm really close to being done with the castle wall quilt, which we'll post and you all see when it gets done. 
Um, I want another hand piecing quilt because we all know I am not an English paper piecing girl. So send your hate mail. Too. Send your hate mail now. Because <laughs> in the YouTube comments, <laughs> why not? <laughs> I I have, we've said this before. I love it. I appreciate it. I don't want to do it, but I like this hand piecing. So I wanted the templates to, you know, have a new project for next year once this one's done. Cool. So. What is on your, I have some other stuff, but what's on your list? Endless bobbin and more time. That's it? That's it. <laughs> no, I was coming up with ideas for I other know. people. I know, I tricked you. <laughs> no, I so, want a light. I want like a light, because I don't have a light to travel with. So like I know I want a fat quarter bundle of Tuba Pink's new line, Tabby Road, but that's not gonna be out till March. So I'm not gonna get an IOU. And my husband's gonna be like, well, you want cat fabric? You got cat fabric in your room. So. You get a gift certificate. I know. Gift certificates are great Christmas gifts. I'll probably get a calendar. <laughs> I, I always put that. <laughs> my brother and sister on gift certificate to this quilt shop. Yeah. That's what I want. So, well, where it comes down to, for my husband and I, since we've got kids, they're 10 and 12, you know, Christmas has been deprioritized for us as grown ups. You know, whether it's financial reasons or focuses on the kids or, you know, like we tend to get each other one thing. So I know, you know, I I got him, I purchased a kit to make a minky quilt that's got airplane prints on it. Oh, I love that. And also kit. the dog really loves minky quilts. <laughs> so kind of this purpose. is going to end up being a present to him and the dog. And that's what I'm going to label it. You hey. and the dog. <laughs> and he's going to be like, what? And there you go. And so we don't we don't really buy a lot of stuff for each other. And I, th I saw my parents go through the same thing when my sister, or maybe I was oblivious as a child, and I was like, me, me, me. <laughs> but I see now where, you know, we've or it's early November. We've gotten the call of like, go purchase stuff off your mom's wish list so I know what to get. It's an email from my dad. So right. it, it's, it, we haven't, if there's something that I truly want, honestly, it, and it's something uh, that I want right now, be like, I'm just going to go buy that. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> well, and see, Mike and I are in a different situation because we don't have kids. So, and there's only so many dog toys the dogs are interested in I know. playing in. So they get, like, milk bones. I may have given Fred his dog toy early already because he saw it. It's a little skunk. His name is Stinky. <laughs> and we're like, where's Stinky? And Fred runs off and finds him. It's very cute. Except Stinky's the same color as one of the cats. You know, he's black and white. And so then Fred occasionally, like, looks at Jet like, are, Could you, be you. are you my Stinky? <laughs> yes, but then Jet would just take care of him. And... Oh, but then Jet, like, grabs Stinky and plays with him. And Fred's just like, what's up with that? touching my stuff. Yes. Anyway. So, yeah. so we're in a different... So we just yeah. we only buy for each other. Now having and our nieces and nephews. Yeah. I mean, we buy for. I mean, having said too, that, but... like I, my mother in law is a quilter, so she loves to get me quilting stuff. And so sometimes I point her in the right direction, like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we said in the last episode, I I need a light that I can travel with. Mm -hmm. So a, one of those Ot lights, or I think they're the kind you have. Yeah. Um, which isn't an Ot light brand; it's a no, different it's brand. Super bright, and they, you know, the shop we got. Yes. Yeah, and so, there so there are shops near us that do. Um, holiday wish list ideas, so they showcase different gifts in their newsletter each week, right, yeah. which is a great. And that's how I got the idea for the light. My mother-in-law got me the light last year, right? And then my husband got me a cal calendar. I was joking, but I was like, oh, I like that. It was a Lori Holt calendar, and I, I just really wanted the little house block pattern in the back. But I'm like, well, we need one for the kitchen anyway, and I'll just look at quilts in the kitchen. That's cool, you know. Mm -hmm. But every year we just get a family calendar, and I got to write in what day we're doing stuff and all that. Yeah, so. exactly. Well, and what else? Um, oh, last night on the sew-in, we were talking about self-threading needles. Mm. Those are always good to have if you're a quilter. The yeah. self-threading needles are always nice. But I could see where, unless I sent my husband a direct link and said, buy this and put it in my stocking. And I'm That's like, get me self-threading needle. Just picture a man growing angrier by the second wandering around. What is a self-threading needle? Like... No, that's when you <laughs> send the specific length on the page. Or you call the quilt shop. Say, and, and he will like, be coming my in. My husband is coming in. Point him in this direction. Oh, I, you know, one of the quilt shops around here did that. They gave out cards and said, write down your wish list. And, and we'll mail give it. it. And they no, they will mail it to They the will person. mail it to your husband. <laughs> or you just give it to your husband and say, this is what I want. And then send him shopping. So, 
And Mike's good about that. I mean, he does that, or then he goes a little rogue and gets other stuff, and it's nice. Now, I do think that our wish lists are reflective of the discussion we had in process versus finish, because I'm like, I don't need to explore new things. I have perfectly good things now. <laughs> <laughs> I, on the other hand, I want this new ruler. I want this new da-da-da. Yeah, I'm definitely more process-oriented. Like, he'll get me... Like, I have the set of intense ink pencils for drawing that you can draw on fabric and then quilt with. And, yeah, I always look for those. I like new toys. My yeah, quilt toys kind of thing. I mean, I like other toys, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the new whatever PS3 game or something. But I normally get that for him. Like yeah. the PS3 stuff. Yeah, we just kind of divvy up like what movies have we seen that we like and want to own and then I just put half on his list and half on my list. Yes. <laughs> like, yeah. one of us really want Ghostbusters over the other. I'm like, meh. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> like, well, movies are easy. Like, yeah. movies, books, like those are always on our wish list. Movies and books. Because we're both readers and we both, you know, I enjoy movies more than he does. But what's cool is uh, Mike set up a server in the house. He's a computer guy, FYI. He set up a <laughs> server in the house. So it's a private server <laughs> that he loads all of our movies on so that I can access it through um, Apple TV. Mm -hmm. So I can watch whatever movie and don't have to find it in the stacks of movies that we own. It's just all on there. I can see the stack. <laughs> I'm like, that is it. Three big stacks, in fact. Yeah, and those are all on those yeah. are all on that server, so that we can access it. And so, and that's where I how I watch movies while I quilt all the time. You know, I want to watch all the Indiana Jones. I can watch all the Indiana Jones. I want to watch. <laughs> I, I mean, dun, dun, the really dun, dun, long day is dun, dun, when you want to watch. You know, all the Star Wars back to back, or all well, it's the only four, or all the because the first Lord of the Rings and Hobbits. <laughs> The Lord of the Rings and Hobbits, that is a long day, Lord of the Rings Hobbits. Back yeah, to my back. husband has a dream of just one day doing the back-to-back, -back, like all the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings movies. And I'm like, have fun with that. Oh, I've done it. Because <laughs> I would love to do it, but I, I would go stir-crazy. I've done Unless it. Unless I were, you know, sick or incapacitated in some way. I think that would be oh, the only I've way I've done it. Do but it. I do it when I'm doing other stuff. I've totally done it. Or do you like, I like, we have all the Mission Impossibles. Watch all those back-to-back. You know, because they're fun. Jason Bourne's back to back. I like watching movies that I've already seen a bunch of times, and then I can sew because I'm not missing anything. But it's still playing. Mm -hmm. Or musicals. I watch a lot of musicals. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Chicago or Hairspray or Le Miz or. He ran into my knife five times, <laughs> 12 times, however many times Ten. it was. 10 times. 10 times. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, so any other thing else on your wish list since you tricked me? Time. I can't give you more time. I could save it in a bottle. <laughs> I'm just going to be quiet the rest of the episode and see how far she strays. <laughs> you said that you need endless whatever. An what endless bobbin. Endless bobbin. I thought you said your husband was working on the endless bobbin idea. So this is a thing for him to give me. <laughs> he already knows about it. If no, I'm going to spring you, it on him Christmas Eve. Hey. If he comes up with endless bobbin, we are going to make tons of money. <laughs> because the Stitch TV show will be selling that. I'm sure. Yeah. That would be good. And more time. I can't Now, okay. Time. So... Uh, Having just gotten the uh, Handy Quilter Sweet 16, I will say, I would probably, I do have like a couple rulers specific to quilting on my wish list. Oh, there you go. And that's about it. Those are expensive. Yeah, that's why they're on the wish list. I haven't <laughs> bought them yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but that is, I, now, do you put anything on your wish list that you want somebody to make you? No. No, not really. I don't either. Because usually I'm like, I, I will make it myself. And I my know, mom does but, that too. But don't you, but don't you appreciate it when so like I oh, really yeah. appreciate it when my, <laughs> now I'm not trying to get you all to do anything, but I really appreciate it when people make me stuff because I, I know how much time it takes. I know 
what thought process goes into. You know, I think if I'm giving away something that's made, I love them more than if I, I know that's not, than if I buy something for them. I'm gonna get you a box of Oreos. <laughs> Mary I Christmas. will not get, I won't be able to, Mike will eat every one of those Oreos. I gave that to him That's one better year than for me. Christmas. I'll just eat I the middle up, out and leave the little shell cookies in there. I mean, that nonsense. I wrapped up a thing of Oreo <laughs> cookies and put it under the Christmas tree for Mike. The dogs were quite interested in that package and Mike figured out what it was before he opened it. Because the dogs kept going, can we open this, Mom? <laughs> no, stay away from that. That's why we can't put bacon under the tree. (laughs) (laughs) Bacon's bad. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, anything else? No, I mean, we are fortunate enough to be comfortable that there's not a ton that we need or need to wish for or any of that. Oh, that's true. That's true. We're good. But people always want gift ideas. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Production staff had a comment, and that comment was, ugh. You know, right now, right now, I'm in a slight panic because I have a couple of gift things that I need to make, and I'm not made them. So, whatever. Well, in that vein, we apparently need to go finish some projects for Christmas. Exactly. So, <laughs> that's all we have for this episode today because it can't go on any further. Today's show couldn't happen except for 77 Peaches Enterprises for their creative support. <laughs> uh, we'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, Cotton Art Studio, and Hip to Be a Square for being part of The Stitch. You can find the links to their sites on our show site, thestitchtvshow.com. If you're interested in sponsoring the show, please email us at info at thestitchtvshow.com. Have we gotten any of those emails yet? No, no. Okay, that's all we've got for this episode. If you enjoyed, please like us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus, and share it with your friends. The next virtual sew in is going to be Friday, January 14th at 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and Google Plus. My podcast, Hip to Be a Square, is out every Friday at hiptobeasquarepodcast.com or on iTunes. And you can email us with any questions or comments at info at the stitch TV show.com or you can buy our patterns at shop dot the stitch TV show.com. All those details and more can be found on our website, the stitch TV show.com. <laughs> Tune in next time for more Wait, quilting chat the, with friends. Is it the stitch TV show.com? I believe that it is. <laughs> we could scroll back on the replay and check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks.